Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mental Mosaic. So part of our theme is feeding all parts of who we are. And I think there is nothing better for the soul and uh, nothing better than a, a way to relax than to lose yourself in reading a book. So of course, I'm super excited. I've got Catherine Bybee with me this morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So you have an interesting story, but I want to talk about your, your book, When It Falls Apart, because it kind of spoke to me. I, my, both my parents passed away in 2020. Uh, my mom at the beginning of the year and my dad towards the end. And I left my life. Um, I was able to work remotely because of COVID, but I, you know, went and spent like six months with him and then another six weeks after he passed before I returned home. And that's what this book is all about. And I love it. So tell us a little bit what it's about. Well, it, it is about the, the, the person out there, and we all will get there one day, where you have to have that conversation with your parents about maybe giving up the car keys uh, or moving to assisted living um, and not being in, uh, independent any longer. And, and that's what this story is about. Brooke, my heroine, is doing this for her father, but, but, but they don't have the typical tit-for-tat type of a relationship. He, she meets him basically as an adult. Uh, and when, so he, having been abandoned as a child, by this man and now she's in charge of you know and taking the charge and accepting the charge I should say of of taking care of him and when he really needs it the most and and this is this resonates with a lot of people even if they didn't have that part they understand we're all going to get there if we're lucky then mm-hmm. have to take care of our parents um and that's a hard job it's super hard uh, and I wanted to write a story that I think could relate with to so many of my readers um especially since our parents aren't getting any younger um and and there's a lot of emotions that go with this and I just wanted to put it in a book especially since I was dealing with it at the time and it sounds like it was right in the middle of 2020 which I didn't really put a lot of the pandemic in there at all, actually. Um, but it, it, it was a very difficult time to deal with sick loved ones. And I needed to write about it. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I feel like we, we have a connection already because that's how I feel. I feel like when we were in the hospital, my dad and I, we were having fun. We were joking around and, right. and he didn't really know what was happening. And it turned out to be glioblastoma right. and he said, you know, you have to share this story somehow. And ever since that, ever ever since his passing, and you know, I mean, it it took a while, but I feel like I'm in a place now where I want to share that story. Right. And that's why, that's what Mental Mosaic really is all about. Well, and this is a book that um, for me was cathartic in writing and it is sharing the story. I I am lucky enough to have a platform to do that. So why not use it? Why reinvent the wheel and make something up every time I sit down to write a book? Why not pull from a a, a difficult time? And and my father and I didn't meet until I was uh, a a teenager and and he didn't step up to the plate until later in life. And, And I know I'm not alone in that. I absolutely know I'm not alone in that. And I, I want to inspire people to make it okay if they if they make the choice to do this or even if they make the choice not to do this because it is at the end of the day really a choice you don't have to but when you do it expect that there's going to be times when you kind of are bummed that you're doing it it's a lot of work and you definitely have to give up your life to do it and that's it's hard it's a super hard job there's so many emotions too you know I was so concentrated on, first of all, getting him better because we didn't know what was happening and moving him from Massachusetts to New Mexico. But I feel like we kind of missed out on those deeper conversations that we could have had if we just accepted what was happening. Yeah. And that's, that's something that I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to do with my father. He's still alive. Um, He's still he still charges me with lots of things to do on a daily basis. I love him. Um, but he, I did move him closer to me here, closer to San Diego. And it, it, and we have those deep conversations. And I don't gloss over that in the book. I absolutely do not gloss over that in the book. And I, I pair that with a loving relationship with a new man and a, and a, and a family that is whole and, and complete and, and steps up to the plate unconditionally. And I think you've just got a well-rounded read that I think is going to hit a lot of points for people that are, are picking this book up this summer. 
I'm super excited to let everyone know about this book, but you have an interesting story too, because you were not always a writer. I was not. No, I was an emergency room nurse for most of my adult life. Uh, I wanted to be an actress. That didn't pan out so well. Um, become, become, uh, you know, Florence Nightingale. And I, I, I decided I wanted to work with people and, and help them out. Um, but then fast forward many years after I was a nurse and I got hurt on the job. And while I was convalescing and dealing with that um, situation, I started writing what I like to read. Uh, and considering I couldn't spell my way out of a paper bag if you paid me to, <laughs> thank God for spell check. And an Oxford comma, yeah, you're never going to teach me exactly where that goes. Thank God for editors. Um, but I can spin a good story and I, I, I tell my stories from the heart. So I really do I'm lucky I've been able to transition to a new career. It's been wonderful. I think that's the most important part because I think, especially now with social media, we see through the baloney better now, I think. Absolutely. You have to be genuine. You do. And I, you know, I mean, today I've got my makeup on and my hair done and all that kind of stuff. But if you pick up my social media, there's oftentimes you're sitting there looking at the raw and edited version. But and that's real. And I, it is. And I think that's one of the reasons why I have found so many readers, to be quite honest, is I am myself. And if you meet me in public, I was just at a book signing in Edinburgh, which was phenomenal. Um, and you meet me and I and I, I would like to think that I'm pretty normal. And I that we all at the end of the day still come home and sit on our couch with our whether it's a glass of wine or a bowl of popcorn and Netflix binging, you know, that's what we do. <laughs> so where did you find I want to say bravery to change careers um, midway because that's a scary thing for a lot of people. I know I have kind of wrestled with that as well. You know, your career is going well. I understand you got hurt, but, you know, how do you say finally, you know what, I'm putting that behind and I'm moving on to what I'm passionate about? Um, I, I, I grew up in a very uh, difficult situation um, and uh, having grown up with a lot of turmoil, I only got to where I'm at by biting the bullet and doing it, you know, getting get in and not letting excuses get in my way of making life choices, moving to different states. That's a, that's a big thing, right? And, and picking a career path and then switch. Now it's completely different career path. And that's, I think that deep down inside, it is a hard decision, but you got two choices in life. You can either step up and show up or you can be left in the past. And I don't, we got one, we got one shot at this, right? There's only so mm -hmm. many trips around, this, uh, around the sun and it's, this is it. This is it. I'm going to make my stake. I'm going to have something that's more about my life when I'm gone I, and then leave, hopefully leave this place a better place, or at least have inspired other people to be the best selves that they can be. Oh my gosh. I love that. That is exactly how I feel right now. I want to, you know, start the conversation. You know, we're all struggling somehow. Nobody, yep. nobody is Facebook perfect or Instagram perfect. And no. I just wish that we would show that too, because I think that would be so much more inspiring than that perfect picture by the pool with your drink and your perfect bathing suit on. No, no, no. That's There's the no real filter. inspiration. There's no filter on life. There's no filter on life. There's no filters in the books. That's that's the beautiful thing about writing fictional characters based on real life is that you can't, you, there, there's mm -mm, no filter. This is the way it is. This is raw. <laughs> this is unedited. I'm with you on that one. I love it. Well, where can people go for more information on your book and you? Well, of course, Amazon is going to be a great place to find everything, right? All my backlist and so forth. But if you go to katherinebybee.com or of course, Instagram and Facebook, and I'm now on TikTok, which is an interesting phenomenon, but I love it. I know, I'm trying. I just started. So I don't know what I'm doing exactly, but <laughs> I'm getting taught. So um, you're going to find me anywhere. You, If you Google my name after 10 million readers and this many years of doing this, you'll find me. I guarantee it. <laughs> I love it. TikTok is so addicting. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Four hours later. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I, know. And like, I could do that. And I have my props everywhere. And like, yeah, yeah. it's a lot harder my than husband, my husband the other day. He's like, why is there a tripod in the bedroom? What's happening in here? And like, I had to do the TikTok where you put your foot on the wall and you try to stand up and blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah. Okay, enough. I don't need to well, hear anymore. My body doesn't <laughs> shift like that anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to try. Over. It was even funnier. <laughs> I'm not doing it. 
I'm not oh doing my gosh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us today. And I look forward to speaking with you again. Absolutely. Yeah. Have my people call your people. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank Have you. a good day. I will. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.